Hi, this is Chris with Swanky Turtle Games, and we're going to do a little demo for you of RB8 Retro Baseball 8-Bit. We're going to play a couple innings just to give you an idea of how the game plays, and hopefully make it go smooth for you when you try it out. Um, so the game is really driven off of uh, two key things. You're going to be looking at your player ratings, and then also you're going to be using these uh, pitching and hitting keys a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you what that kind of looks like. So up to bat, uh, we could say for um, Mike's team is Peter Thorne. So you're going to look at his contact and power rating, and you're going to add those ratings together. So for Peter Thorne, he would be a 14 total for his hitting skill. Um, then you're going to compare that to the active pitcher, which for me is Rocket Lemons. You're going to compare his control and stuff ratings. That for Rocket Lemons is going to be a 17. So in this particular at-bat, I am going to be plus three for my roll-off against Mike. So we'll go ahead and roll the die just to give you an example. So in this, I rolled a nine plus three. So he rolled a ten, but since I'm plus three, I actually won that roll. So that means my pitcher has a better chance to control the at-bat. It does not guarantee him control because we're going to roll a control die. There's a green control die for the batter and then a red for the pitcher. Which is called the on-deck phase. The on-deck phase, exactly. So um, on the red pitcher die, we have four pitcher symbols and two batter symbols. Those numbers are reversed on the batter die. So you do have a much better chance to control the at-bat as a pitcher rolling the pitcher die, but you're not guaranteed. So we're gonna roll and see what happens. So I roll, it's actually a batter symbol. So Mike would then roll these two and we would compare to the hitting key to see what he got. So we'll take a look. Uh, three six is a ground ball to shortstop. So in that case, you're gonna now take one, or Mike would take one D six and compare it to the ground ball key. So if you're a batter, you really wanna see a five or six. Anything but a five or six is not gonna be good for the batter. Each result there is laid out uh, depending on what it is. But generally, if you're the batter, you wanna see a five or six. Um, so that's how an at-bat would work. In that case, Mike would be out and we would move on to the next uh, batter. Uh, so that's the kind of the key mechanic of the game, but there are some other things that we have to uh, keep in mind. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to be dealt three rally cards. So that would be three for Mike and three for me. Um, these cards uh, basically are gonna give you some special powers that you can trigger throughout the game. Um, they can be any number of things like create wild pitches, rain delays, uh, streakers can run out onto the field. Um, he'll show you, Mike will show you some examples of a couple of them. They all have pretty self-explanatory powers. The one thing to remember with these rally cards is you can only play one rally card per inning. So if you play a rally card, you cannot play another one on your turn until uh, the following inning. Half, uh, half inning. Half inning. I'm sorry, half inning. Um, so you cannot just play all three of your rally cards back to back. You can only play them once per half inning. Um, that is pretty much the basic mechanics. You'll see a little bit more of some of the moving parts once we start playing the game, uh, but that gets you the basics to where you can you know, start batting, uh, start the game. So I'm gonna be starting out with Rocket Lemons as we mentioned, and then Mike, who do you have up to bat there to start? I'm leading off. I have May Donna. May Donna. May Donna has a power of five and a contact of five. Not super high, but she does have a great speed, so I do wanna get her on base speed of 10 so we'll see what happens on the at-bat here yeah. so um, I am a 17 so I am plus a lot against Madonna so he's got a plus seven here so one thing to remember is um, double sixes you instantly are gonna gain control and double ones from the opposing team would instantly give away control so even in a lopsided matchup like this there's still always that chance but that did not happen so rocket lemons would gain control um, Hopefully he gains control based on my pitcher uh, roll here, which I gave it away again. So our two examples here are giving it away. So we'll see what Maydonna does. All right, so Maydonna, hopefully she can use that speed to get on base. Let's see what happens. Rolling from the hitting key now, I roll a 2-6 combo. So looking at the hitting key, I look at the 2-6, to six, and that's not going to get me on base because I just struck out swinging. Yeah, that is not good. Enough. So... Um, one thing to keep in mind too is you can earn more rally cards as the game goes on. So you start off with a three, but uh, one way to earn rally cards is on the defensive side is by striking out two batters in one inning. So Chris is already uh, one step ahead of me on that. Another way is to go one, two, three in an inning, which is basically 
Uh, three batters up, three batters down, no one reaches base at all, mm -hmm. you can draw a rally card that way. On the offensive side, you can draw a rally card by hitting two home runs in an inning or scoring four runs or more in the inning. And then there's a couple other uh, scenarios, bottom of the seventh inning, before it starts, the seventh inning stretch, uh, both players just have a roll off with two D6 and whoever rolls higher will get a rally card there. And then a catch up mechanism in the game is a one player is ever trailing by six or more runs. Um, they may draw one card once per game as a, for a rally card to try to help them catch up in the game. But those are the ways to earn rally cards beyond the normal three draw at the beginning of the game. Right. So moving on to the next at bat. So you also, you're going to notice the red cube there. That's going to signify who the active batter is. And then we have our scorer card here, which is going to show how many outs you have and also keep track of what inning you're in and what the scores are. So we have one out, and up next is Peter Thorne, who we used that example for. Another thing is, obviously the ratings are, are driving the game, but each card also is going to have a special power that can come into play in different scenarios. So uh, we won't go into what every single one of our powers are here for this example, but you definitely want to, when you're playing, to keep track of your powers to see how that could affect uh, the outcome of the game. So his 17 to my 14, he's plus 3 on me, and my roll wasn't good anyway, so... He's got potential control of the dice here. See if I can actually roll good. And I did and, not. Uh, Three in a row. I rolled the, the batter symbol. So, so Chris is relinquished back to me. So again, we're going to roll from the hitting key. So let's see if I can get something going here. And I got to roll the 2-3 from the hitting key, which is a line out to shallow center field. That is good for me. So, and I don't think I have any rally cards or anything like that. It's going to help me out. So... Moving on to the next batter, Chris is on his way to one, two, three innings. So hopefully, I can break his streak up here. So next up, I have a uh, Hank Hammer. Hank Hammer, he's uh, pretty powerful in this game. He's got a uh, power of ten and a contact of nine. So in this case, uh, the batter is plus two. So let's see what we can do here with this one. So me being plus two, I rolled a six, which gives me a total of eight. The so Chris is seven. So I do have potential control rolling the green dice because I am the batter, this, the green for batter. And, well, I guess we're playing uh, opposite <laughs> world here today because uh, I rolled the pitching symbol, me. so here we go. So we will see what happens out of the pitching, uh, the pitching key. And a 1-6 on the pitching key is a line out to second base. So this would be the third out of the inning, a 1-2-3 inning, so I get to draw an additional rally card, which is really big in this game, because these cards can really help swing the balance of the game. So I look at that and put it down, and then we are now in the bottom of the inning, so we will switch out pitchers. So coming up to pitch for me is uh, Zeke Cranky. He's got a control of 8 and a stuff of 7, so I have a 15, not uh, quite as good as uh, Rocket Lemons there, but... Not a bad uh, special ability here called Power Outage. So if I give up a home run from the pitching key, um, I can roll 1d6, and on a result of 5 or 6, <laughs> um, I can turn that home run into a D-fly out instead. So um, I got potential to maybe protect myself against some home runs there. So hopefully I won't be giving up any anyways, but we'll see what happens. And we also want to make sure we're marking our batter so you know who's going to start the next yeah, so, so use that cue for that. Hank made the last out, so here we go. All right. So, so you got there leading off, Chris. Up for me, I have a Ty Win, who is a 14, but he does have a cool power. So uh, when the result from either key is a 3 and a 5 combo, it is a single to left field instead, and runners advance 1. So he has an extra chance there to get a single. So we'll see what happens. And you said what was his rating? A 14. So, so I'm plus 1 here in the roll. Plus 1. I uh, plus 1 would give me a 5, which is still not enough. So Chris will get to roll his batter control dice. And there we go. Batter uh, gets control. Let's see if we can get a hit on the board here. Roll the one three. Which one three is going to get him a walk. I will take it. So, so he is on. Now what you're going to do when you actually have someone on base is we have these additional cubes here. And there's two of each color. So I'll move the at bat cube to the next one in the lineup. And then I'll choose a color for Ty Win because he's now on base. So I'll put one green cube on him and then the other on the base that he would now be on. So I'll put him there. Um, another thing, now that we have someone on base we can show you, in the game, you can, like a real baseball team, choose to steal base. Um, so if you're going to steal, you're going to look at who's on base. So you'll match up the cube color with who's there. Uh, you'll look at their speed rating. So for the example of Ty Win, he has a speed of 6. You will then compare that to the catcher's defense rating on the opposing team. 
So I don't know what is your uh, defense rating over there, Mike. I got Mick Solskjaer as my catcher. Um, he has a defense of eight. So he's a defense of eight. I'm a speed of six. So if I chose to steal, we would have a roll off. He would be plus two in the roll off because he's too high on defense. Whoever rolled higher, uh, I would either succeed and make it to second base or he would throw me out and I would have an out. So in this case, since I'm at a disadvantage there, I'm gonna choose not to steal, but that is how that uh, mechanic would work. So in the example of last inning, if he would have gotten May Donna, who has a speed of 10 on base, she can be really dangerous on those base paths, stealing bases. But uh, also keep in mind when you do steal, um, you make sure you announce that before the uh, on-deck phase rolls mm -hmm. happen. That way uh, the steal will resolve before the, uh, the batter control dice gets rolled. Yes. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Sure. All right, so uh, not stealing, he says, so he uh, doesn't want to risk it already. So um, what do you got coming up next, Chris? I have a trick tuner who is a 14 total. All right, so again, uh, Z Cranky's a plus one here on my dice roll, which I'm not rolling Ooh, too high. Roll a 10. So again, I uh, relinquish. Well, we'll see what Chris Hopefully rolls. relinquish. Nope, I gave it to him. Chris gives it back to me, so dice are rolling in our favor oppositely here. And rolling from the pitching key. So Z Cranky rolls the 3 4 combo. Again, back to the pitching key on a 3 4 is going to be a ground ball to second base. Okay. So this is where uh, Chris will roll the 1d6. And I really want to see a 5 or a 6. If not, we'll have to see what happens. But a 5 or 6 are the best potential results for you if you're the runner. And I rolled a 4. You got a 4. So 4, you notice on the ground ball key, is going to be batter out of first base. And if he has runners on, which he does, they will advance 1. So he did move the runner up, so it wasn't the worst ground ball result. Yep, so we are now at one out. So he moved his runner cube up to second base. And I moved my green cube to second. So um, up next for me is Mo Vegas, who uh, has a total power and contact of 18. 18, so Chris has got a plus three on me here. Try and drive the run home. I rolled double sixes. So? So automatic good. win. I don't have yep. to roll my uh, pitcher control dice because of double sixes, so... I will automatically just get the roll from the pitching key. So that's huge. No chance of giving that up. Uh, and really good pitch. I rolled a 5-6, which, uh, <laughs> if you know the game, that is not good. You, you so I don't see... know. <laughs> that's the one mistake that the, the pitcher can make from the pitching key. And as you can see, the 5-6 is a home run to right field. Now, I do have my special ability with Z Cranky. As you remember in the game, that if he gives up the home run from the pitching key which this is from the pitching key, mm -hmm. I can roll a 1d6 and rob that with a 5-6. One other thing to point out that we didn't do pregame was we didn't specify where our outfielders play. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes uh, certain outfielders have uh, abilities that can rob home runs, singles, doubles, etc. And so you want to clarify your pregame um, who play, who's playing in what position. Also, you will have a designated hitter as well. Um, so you'll, you'll have like somebody there with an extra position. Maybe you'll have two first basemen out there on your lineup one of those first basemen then will have to become your DH. And so that will all be determined pre-game. But so sorry for uh, for getting that to tell you that. But nonetheless, um, Z Cranky is going to try to rob this home run and I need a five or six. Otherwise, I'm in the hole early in the game. And I roll a five. Roll a five. So my, my special ability comes in and becomes a deep fly out instead. Now, on a deep fly out, they are, there are tag rules. Um, as you notice, uh, there's little asterisks on the keys, sometimes referencing um, um, runner, base runner movement, and then also on deep flyouts, it refers to the tag um, tagging rules. So he could potentially tag if he mm -hmm. if he would like to, because it was now a deep flyout and it's still less than two outs here. So how tagging works is similar in the same way as uh, stealing a base would work. His runner on second base would uh, compare his speed to uh, where the ball was hit to. In this case, um, the 5-6 was hit to right field um, from the pitching key, so we know that went to right field, so the deep flyout isn't right. Again, I did not establish pregame who my right fielder was and was for this video's sake, but we'll just say that uh, Herbie Muppet here is my right fielder. We'll just pick him. He's an outfielder, so we'll make him my right fielder. And he has a defense of 9, so that was a good one to pick. Yep. So 
My defense of nine versus a speed of six. I'm going to venture. Chris is probably not going to try to tag on me because I have a plus three in my dice roll, and he probably does outs. not want to make the third out in the inning at third yeah, base there. I don't want to end the inning on the base pass, so I will pass. One thing to keep in mind, though, that if there is a runner on third base, he does get a plus one to his speed tagging from third to home because of the distance of a throw. So, um, But in this case, he's only at second base, so it would be regular <laughs> speed versus my regular defense. Um, so Chris is going to opt out to mm-hmm. not tagging here. All right, so next up for me, I have Brian Cower, who is a 13, so I'm minus two here. All right, let's see if I can get out of this inning now with my big robbing home run. 2-4, so uh, you, I was a plus two, so I technically rolled a eight there. So I have a chance to control it here. We'll see what happens. I do have control. Hopefully I can drive my runner home. A 5-6. So a 5-6 um, in this game, 5-6 um, is actually um, going to refer to the key on the back. Mm-hmm. Now this would uh, apply to, um, uh, if the hitter's rating is 8 or greater, it's a home run to left field. If it's contact rating is 8 or greater, it is a double to right field. Otherwise, it's just going to be a single to center field. So this is where the... Uh, your hitting and uh, excuse me, your power and your contact ratings are going to come into play on this particular role. Um, what is uh, his power there? Well, you're going to be sad to hear that he is a nine, so that's going to be a home run. Oh, okay, that's a bummer. So um, that was rolled from the uh, hitting key. Hitting so key. unfortunately, I cannot use Z Cranky's power because his power says it's he if he gives up home run from the pitching key. So unless I have a defender in the outfield in uh, left field left field that can rob home runs, which I don't believe I do in this setup, um, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. But Chris doesn't know <laughs> that in my hand I hold a rally card. Uh-oh. Um, these are all prototypes. They're, the real rally cards are going to have new artwork on them. But in this case, I have a rob a home run card. So if the... Uh, Offense hits a home run. I can play this card, and your defensive player at that position it was hit to makes a great leaping catch to rob the home run. The batter's out again and becomes a deep fly, and tag rules apply. I'm hoping a card. Chris doesn't have one specific card here, and it looks like he's I pulling do. it out, so I'm a little disappointed about this. <laughs> I'm going to play the mascot jinx card, which you can show him the mascot jinx. Again, we have new artwork <laughs> for these as well, but here's, the, here's what it does. So Chris just played the mascot jinx, and this card cancels out a rally card I just played. So my rob a home run card was used up and I did not rob the home run. This home run will go through after all of that. So I will score two runs. So the batter who just hit the ball would score a run and then also I had a, a runner on second. So that's two runs scored and I am on the board. So Z Cranky almost got out of that inning but uh, almost robbed two home just runs could not inning. do it. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. We got... Uh, now I have a, a Bam Bam Harpoon is up, and he is a 18. And uh, you might notice too, Chris, uh, that Brian Coward has a special ability that kind of affects the batter he uh, hits behind him. Well, it, it actually affected the batter oh, in front of him. My yeah. bad. <laughs> Chris didn't catch that. I missed it, but yeah. yeah he had a, a plus for uh, being batting in front of him, but yep. nonetheless, Chris is still on a roll here. So you have an 18, you believe? Oh, okay. Here's his double one, so unless, unless I roll he... double ones, uh, we... I give did the not. control away. So he instantly gets control. No need to roll the control dice or anything. He can just roll from the pitching key. All right, roll from the pitching key. So I'm going to take the red die. Just, I would double one. I'm not going to take the red die because it was an instant yep. win. <laughs> I already forgot. And one five. So I think I might have got out of this one okay. Let's see what a one five is. It's a line out to shallow right field. I don't. We've already played rally cards, so we can't Nothing. play rally cards. It's half inning. And. <laughs> He doesn't have a special ability, I don't Nothing think, to I can do. stop this. So yeah. I have stopped the bleeding, <laughs> got out of that inning okay. So that is a, uh, a quick uh, overview of, of how a one inning would work on this game. Um, anything else you want to add, Chris, about uh, anything we missed here? No, I think that gives you a, definitely a good idea of uh, how the game flows. You saw some base runners moving and how the hitting and pitching keys work. Um, obviously, any other questions, you can consult the rules, but hopefully that gets you a little jump start to get started playing quick. So I hope you guys enjoyed the little demo, and uh, we'll continue uh, playing, and hopefully I can add on to my lead. <laughs> and I'll just add one quick thing before we go here. Um, in case of ties, 
uh, when we roll dice. Um, if both of us tie, depending, adding in the plus minuses, it ends up being a tie number. Um, it, it's just typically a foul ball, considered a foul ball, and uh, both players will roll off again. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to running plays, uh, stealing bases, tagging, such, etc., um, ties in that situation go to the runner. So just something to keep in mind when, when a tie is rolled. But uh, we appreciate you guys uh, watching this video, and we hope you enjoy the game and uh, enjoy demoing it with us. Thank you.